Welcome back. So what I've done is actually set up some of these projects files for you. So if you go into After Effects and do File, Open Project, and just ignore that, you won't get that message, and go into the student files underneath AE files, you'll see three simple text files, a start, a middle, and a finish. The start is where we're gonna begin and actually do our tracking. But the middle is when we're done with our tracking, we actually have the text in there. In case you get stuck or something doesn't work quite right and you hit an impasse, you're able to kind of go see how I got there and what my settings were. And then finish is where we actually add that 3D text in at the end from Cinema 4D. So just double click on the start and what you can see here is we've got this footage that I'll we'll just kind of skim through it right here that's got a little bit of movement in it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna track some text to this point here and add some shadows. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a comp. And we can do that by dragging the footage down to the comp icon. Now I've already done that for you. You can see I've got this HB3 comp here. In the comp, all I've got is my footage. And to track the footage, there's two ways to do it. You can right click on here. And unfortunately you can't see this, but it's the sixth one from the bottom. You can say track camera. The other way to do it is from window, make sure your tracker's on and it'll give you this little tracker pane. You can click the uh, track camera icon here and it'll immediately jump in and start tracking the camera. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna initialize some math, take a look at the footage and then analyze it frame by frame, creating a point cloud and then it'll solve the camera. Now because this is gonna go frame by frame, this is gonna take a couple of minutes. So I'll jump out and come back when it's solving the camera. All right, so you can see we're kind of coming towards the end here. It's at 98, 99, and now it's going through and solving the camera. Now this is also gonna take a minute or two, depending on the speed of your machine and the speed of the GPU in your machine. So we'll let it solve the camera and we'll um, come back as soon as that's done. All right, so it's all done solving the camera. And you can see we've got these little itty bitty points kind of all over the place. And we can actually increase the size of those so we can see those a bit better just by kind of cranking them up. And you can see they're getting a little bit bigger. Um, you can also increase the target size. Now, you don't see the target yet because I haven't actually started highlighting any, any of the points. And you can see as I highlight the points, we get this kind of a target. And the target's a little big here. So we're going to kind of make that about half the size. There we go. So we can see it a bit better. And what this does is it's going to establish the plane on which you can either attach a null or text or where you want the camera point, the 3D camera pointed, etc. So what we're gonna do is kinda try and find a point along this embankment here, that looks kinda good, that matches the perspective of our shot. So kinda like that, we kinda have this little craggy thing going on there. So we're gonna, once you've got that set, you right click and tell it to create a text and camera. You can also create a solid and a camera in case you want to just add a particle effect there or something with a plug-in. You can create a null and a camera, which we're going to do a bit later. Now, the reason behind creating a null and a camera, once you've got that null in place, you can actually attach things to it and offset things to it. So for instance, if I wanted some text to show up over the left side of her head, or I wanted some object, to a bird or something to come flying in off the left side of her head, I could create that null and then use that null to parent my bird to, and then just offset my bird to move it from this point to another point, but it would keep that tracking to the, to the camera move. So the bird would actually look as if it was flying the right way and it would be pegged to the actual camera movement inside the scene. So what we're gonna do simply to start off with is just create text and camera. And you can see it doesn't look like it actually did anything, but let's kind of zoom in a bit here. We'll go to 100%. And it's kind of off to our right here. So let me take that down just a little bit and just use the regular zoom tool and kind of go in over here. And you can see there's our text. It's kind of laying flat. So let's take a look at our text real quick and make sure that we're actually looking through our 3D camera. And I'm going to change the rotation of my text to kind of stand it up and get start standing it up that way and then rotating them over kind of like that. And let's take this back to 100% so we can kind of see what's going on now. And let's actually just fit that in. There we go. Maybe go a little bit bigger so we can see that a bit better. And my rotation's a little bit off. So you want to kind of rotate it, kind of get it. There we go. Set the right way and then maybe scale it a bit. And our rotation's still off a little bit. 
So we'll go back and press R here and rotate. And for those of you who aren't expert at the keystrokes on um, After Effects, R, I'm pressing R for rotation and S for scale to switch between without having to show all the different parameters at once. I kind of find that a little bit faster for my own workflow. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit more. Oop, not that way. Kind of like that there. Uh, almost there. There we go. Now we got our, our text kind of stuck to that point. And let's kind of skim the camera here. And we can see that text sticks exactly to where it should, which is beautiful. Now, how do we actually bind that in without making it look like we bolted that thing on? So one of the things we can do is create a little mask around our text. So we highlight our text here and we just create a little bitty mask, just kind of like this. Just kind of follow the line of the dirt here. And then we'll just outline our text and close that guy up. And you can see now we kind of masked off the bottom of it a little bit and made it look like it's kind of hiding in there. And then what I like to usually do is add a little bit of feather to bring a little bit of the pixels from the background image into my text element or whatever element I'm adding. So we just hit M for mask and then F for feather. And then we'll just add a little bit of feather there. Just a 10 pixels should be enough. Let's click off it for a second. Click all the way off it. 10 pixels may be a little too much. Let's take it down to like five. And then unfortunately, this little box kind of gets annoying. So you just click in the gray area and that'll kind of hide it. There you go. Five does the trick. And let's kind of track that along. There we go. All right. So now we can just go through and change our text to whatever we want our text to be by clicking the text tool. And I'm just going to say blue lagoon. And you can see we've got a problem already. So what happened? Well, I've got this mask in here and this mask is a little bit too small for this text. So I'm going to need to readjust this mask to fit my text. And also my text parameters seem to be laying the text, you know, right on top of each other. So I'm going to change this to auto and then kind of move our text up a little bit in position. So we'll hit P for position and just move them up in the Y a little bit. So we get the lagoon part should be right around there. And then we're going to grab the pen tool and move our mask down. There we go. And you can see my the top part of my lagoon text is down there. So I'm going to have to go in and readjust my character separations a bit. And I'm trying to be a little careful here to keep my... Uh, to keep that terrain kind of pitch kind of going along, that little craggly kind of pitch there. Just like that. And then let's take this off auto. Let's try uh, like 16. We can always adjust this. There we go. That's better. And just by clicking on and holding our mouse and then um, sliding to the left or the right, we can kind of adjust it until we get it exactly where we want it. Now, doing this in lowercase probably isn't a good idea because it's dropping my G down through the text. And that's a kind of a common problem that we run into. So let's go back here and adjust our text with our text tool. And just make this all caps. Blue lagoon and then maybe take our text down a couple of points kind of like that there we go and then we can go back and adjust our mask so it doesn't really need to be quite that far around there we go and let's click in the gray area and scrub through that and there we go so that's an easy way of creating a real quick 3D track and tracking some text to it. Not too bad. Now to really pull this off, what we're going to want to do is create some reflection of this Blue Lagoon text in the water, right? So that'll really kind of help us out. So let's go through and do that here real quick. All right, so to create that reflection, what we want to do is click on our text layer, do Command C and Command V to copy it, or you can go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Either way, I tend to like the uh, keyboard shortcuts myself. And then we're going to want to rotate this guy. And in this case, we're going to want to spin him all the way around. So it's basically upside down. And then we're going to want to change his position a bit. And the Y position, we're going to drag that kind of down there. 
I'm going to put it in the water. And it looks a little too linear, right? The water should actually kind of be distorting this a little bit. So let's change his orientation a little bit. So we'll go back to rotation. And just kind of skew his orientation maybe a little bit like that. And a little bit kind of like a little wider. There we go. Kind of just skew it off a little bit. And maybe bring it a little bit closer with the position. So I'm going to grab the Y position and bring that a little bit closer. Now, it's obviously way too bright for a reflection. So we're going to click T for opacity. Bring that opacity way, way down. About 20% or so. And the reason I'm leaving it, it still looks a little too bright, is we're going to me mess with the feather a little bit to really, uh, really sell this off. So we hit M for mask, then F for feather. And let's increase the feather a whole bunch. Let's crank it way, way up. There we go. Kind of like... About 120 is probably about right. Now let's click in the gray and kind of see how that looks. And you can see we got a nice looking little guy there. Now you could dress this up a little bit more and actually use a uh, a solid layer with a solid layer with a gradient to get some real fall off there. But this isn't really an After Effects uh, class as much as it is a 3D tracking um, and Cinema 4D class. So I just wanted to kind of show you some basics there. So let's uh, render this out. Let's see how this plays through. It should just take a second to render. There we go. It looks like we're looking pretty good there. Obviously, you could change the color and kind of dress it up a little bit better, but... Like I said, we're not looking for production value here as much as we are techniques on how to use the actual 3D tracker. So one thing I noticed when we flip this thing around is that the letters actually aren't lining up. So let's increase that opacity a bunch more so we can see it again. There we go. And you can see the ends under the L, and that's kind of wrong. It's not actually reflecting. So what we need to do there is hit R for reflection and grab this orientation here and flip this guy around right up about there there we go now it looks more like it's actually reflecting the way it should be reflecting and then we'll bring that opacity back down a bunch bring that back down there we go just so it looks now that's that's a bit better so now we've got the l matched up the a and the top text is on top so that'll kind of finish that guy off so it's fairly simple to create this little track and track some text into our scene there and even create a little reflection. All right, so in the next segment, we're gonna take a look at adding in some uh, Cinema 4D 3D text to this same scene.